You guys were so encouraging on my last video. I really appreciate the nice comments. VW folks are just the best. Show me some more love on this video. This The theme of this video is prepping the cabin area for paint. And so what I did was I bolted on the doors that are now completed and finished any kind of glazing and, and bodywork on those, as well as did a ton of work on the front nose. Uh, you'll see several pictures and iterations of me sanding and redoing, and it was such a nightmare, but I got it done. It looks really good. And then finally, to finish out the cabin area, all these areas are, were prime filled anywhere where I needed to do some filler work or glazing work. Um, spot primed, sorry it's the sun, but spot primed any of these interior pieces that are going to show through uh, the panels with, with uh, some, you know, getting the rust and paint off. And finally doing all the seats, jams, and everything inside is that's going to get painted is now primed. The only, col the only yellow coloring you'll see is up here where it's going to be under the dashboard. And if there's no rust, I just left the paint alone. All right, so I'm just going to do a quick follow-up from last part here. Show you kind of what I got done. So I showed you this last time. Got the front face done and primed. Now the back has been all cleaned up and primed as well. Okay, back hatch. So the last time I showed you, I had this done. You see there's white primer on the top. I ran out of gray primer. This is just more rattle cam primer. And uh, so finished sanding the top all the way around, cleaning up all this. And I rust treated all this and then just primed over it. So this door is ready to go. Passenger door. You guys saw the outside of it. Here's the inside, sanded down, primed. You see all the all the black paint in there. So I did all the inside, cleaned that all out, painted that with that Rust-Oleum Rust Performer, and then just primed all the rest. The real work I had to do on these doors was cleaning out the channel all in here, all the way around all that gunk and stuff in there with a wire wheel and goof off and solvents to get all that glue and junk out of there. That was the real work in these doors I spent another quite a bit of time on. Here's the driver door. This I did not get to last time, but you can see I did finish a filler. It definitely does need glazing because I there just some of that I couldn't get to, but it's looking good. And same thing, primed all the way around on the back and all rust reformed in the insides and the bottom. And then the hatch. Ugh. I'm already sweating now. Hatch is done. So Fix that rust spot in the corner there of the window and got everything sanded, primed, filled at the bottom where I had that, those rust spots. And the inside, this is the only door that's not completely done. I just got a little more sanding to do on the top part here, but you can see where it's all black is that rust, Rust-Oleum rust converter. That was all sanded and prepped and coated so I just need to do the top part just sand the rest of that paint on the top and this is going and then prime it and this is going to be done so now that we've got the doors in a good state sorry I'm breathing hard Whew, those are heavy so now that we got the doors in the in a good state we're going to go ahead and uh, work on the body of the car again and I'm going to start with the interior and getting the interior sanded and some spot priming done just to keep it from flash rusting where I sand rust down. A um, couple things I've changed about the materials that I'm going to be using 
is uh, I ran out of that fast line filler. Uh, fast line, I believe, is made by Sherwin Williams. I believe it's a, their automotive division. So it's a good. I, I think it's a good product. But uh, uh, I got turned on to this by Mar Mike FN Garage. This is it's uh, 17,000 is the model number. Formerly AG. What is it? AG 47. So this is the just a rebranded. Uh, AG's 47 filler, so I got a whole gallon of that. So I'll be using that. And the other thing I got, another USC product, is I decided to get some glazing because after working with the filler, uh, I now have a little more knowledge of what needs to be done as far as to get stuff right. And uh, you know, unlike that 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 uh, driver side door, you know. I did two different takes of the filler uh, on, and, and it's just the, the, there's just no way to to get it perfect, you know, or not perfect, but like where there's no dimples or whatever. So glazing is for after, you know, it can go over the primer and real thin coats to just fix those little bits of uh, issues in the filler. So I, I figured, why not spend a little bit more money and uh, spend a little more time. And, uh, you know, again, I'm not going to do a perfect, you know, uh, job, you know, bodywork job like a, you know, like a show finish, but at least get it to where, I mean, there's no sense in not spending a little extra money to get a product to put, you know, to just fill in those little filler issues. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do this and a little bit of guide coating. I believe I bought, you know, again, just to, just to spend a couple ex, a little bit of extra time. I got a couple cans of SEM's product guide coating. It's basically just black spray paint, but I think the nozzle on this will kind of fans it out thin, so it's, it, it acts as a guide coat. I think that's all really that is. I don't, you know, probably over overspent and just could have gotten some cheap black spray paint, but whatever. So yeah, now that we got the doors ahead of the car, we got to go back to the body of the car and start getting that ready and prepped for paint. Now, as you can see, I've been starting on the front of the cab here and just kind of focusing on the roof and uh, it, it ain't pretty, but it is sanded down. I just uh, slapped some Pour 15 on all the rusted spots and all up inside the channels there. And here's all the sanding stuff. This one I can hold it up, and then this is a lot lighter, so I've been using that more on the top where I don't have to hold it up. You see the top's pretty much down to primer. Yesterday, took some shots of me heat shrinking this. It went really well. I mean, this is super firm now, and so and fairly, yeah, not near as drastic. There's a little bit of a low spot right here, but it's it's pretty good. So I'm gonna just focus on this nose today because um, I'm sick of doing sanding. But I'm gonna have to do a little sanding. I'm gonna have to sand this entire part back out uh, about to here, and then I'm going to. Uh, level these uh, holes. These holes were caused by, let me get in tight here, these holes were caused by my stud welder. This one, this one, and this one. That's a factory hole right there, the bigger one. So that'll, I'll leave that. Now this is a factory hole. There should be three of them for the logo, but what ended up happening is the holes they used, the old logo ho holes, um, they kind of bastardized them on the previous logo install and they just end up using sheet metal screws and all sorts of hackery. So those holes ended up opening up with rust and we just welded them back in. So I'm keeping this hole here 
this is untouched and perfectly, you know, a perfectly good hole. And I'll use this as a reference point for the logo. Well, I took the liberty while I'm waiting for the filler to dry to like better mask off everything and kind of get things pulled out and disconnected. And even inside the inside here, you know, I made some efforts to just mask the things. I'm not going to uh, probably probably what I'll do is any like surface rust issues just resand and then spot prime with some rattle cam primer and um, clean up all you know under here uh, but I'm not going to focus and I'll probably shoot this area with the epoxy primer but I'm not going to focus very much on it I'll probably just clean it up as best I can sand it a little bit and then I'll just epoxy prime over it I don't I'm not going to focus on anything that's not visible so all here is covered by the dashboard you don't see much of this um, so I'm not as concerned about that getting bright white and that's just staying the original color but um, yeah and then I try to get the stuff the steering wheel and the wiring all you know masked off a little bit better anywhere where if I if I'm gonna shoot it where I don't lose the color of the wire so here's the other side here you know pulling off like door switches masking wires so I don't lose the color down there masking some stuff up making sure the steering wheel is fully encompassed and all the wiring inside there is protected There's a progress shot here. We've got really that USC product. That's the glazing. That's the filler. <laughs> Go figure. I don't know. They look exactly the same. It's hard to tell. I wish they used a different dye in their hardener. Different color. Uh, and I've sanded down the bumper. I at least got the oxidized paint off. It's still got a little bit of, I mean, it's still got paint on it, but it's it's good enough to prime um you know and uh you know tried to wire a wheel manual sand the headlight cups as good as i could 
as well as all this. Got my little pencil sander all in there, trying to get it all, you know, the rust, whatever. So almost done with that. The roof is completely done. Got the Pour 15 sanded down at 220 grit, just to get it, just to get the uh, oxidized or the, uh, the, you know, the rust spots. So I'll wipe that all down with solvent cleaner. My goal for the end of this today, at least, is to get the the whole nose, you know, just the whole nose resprayed with primer, and that top part just sprayed with primer, just up to here. All right, well, I'm calling it a day. I got everything primed. As you could probably tell. Okay, well, start out with the good stuff. <laughs> I did a pretty decent job of smoothing this lumpiness out. There was some damage. And I was able to, to spoon this out a little bit. You can kind of see a crease there, but uh, it's probably not, the sun is... Let me get the sun behind me. But I'm fairly happy with the bottom there. But holy cow, that nose. Ugh. Jeez, I mean, just, you can see I didn't feather the edge very well. It is just still lumpy everywhere. Yeah, my buddy Brian warned me about the nose. He spent a ton of time on his, and he's, he's still not happy with it. I was just not happy about how that nose turned out after I primed it back up. It was just, I, I know I'm not trying to do the best job, but I'm, I'm trying to make it good. And it didn't even, it didn't even come to the quality of good. <laughs> so sanded it back down, re-guide coated it, and I'm going to just focus some more, uh, some, some, um, glazing in the low spots just really focus on the low spots this time and then see if I can sand it down again with the longboard the longboard's kind of helpful because um, you can just kind of you know obviously you could you get more surface area but when you glide over it uh, the center of it as you're gliding the center of it just kind of hovers over and it and then you can miss the low spots and it's it's a lot more helpful in figuring that stuff out. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna start doing more of that. Just starting with the longboard on on these type of areas. Doors are at least bolted on, just so I can kind of get an idea of how that's going. And I'm basically just working back and forth on this, just sanding and finding low spots, adding a little bit of glazing, sand prep, and see if I can get it better. It already is, I think, going to come out a little bit better. Again, I'm this time instead of just slapping filler on there indiscriminately, so somewhat, I'm really just concentrating on the low spots and seeing if I can build them up. And I think that's work, going to work out a lot better. We'll see once I prime it. Hope it's got to look better than what I had last time. And this is getting a little dark, but uh, as I'm waiting for the filler to dry to rework that or the glazing. I'm just sanding all these areas here. I'll be adding some filler to that, a little or glazing probably, just it's little, little pits, and just kind of sanding all the spots, you know, just all these little things. Gosh, color changes are such a pain. Okay, another day of working on the front, and I think I'm just done with it. It's not great, but it's definitely good now. I'm happy with it now. I don't know how much the camera will pick up, but this is in pretty decent shape there's it's feathered in pretty well on the ed all around the edges it's fairly smooth now there's not as you can run your hand over there's not much rippling uh, I'm sure if you did a guide coat there is well it's low here and I mean you know it's not perfect but man this is about as good as I can get and I'm, I'm happy with this this was three or four rounds of you know sanding prepping glazing sanding prep you know and then repeat and rinse about two or three times but uh, yeah I'm happy with that so you can see that there's a little bit of feathering I didn't do there there's a little bit of 
stuff there, some pinholes. But yeah, I mean, maybe uh, I might go over this with high build primer and do the sanding at 320 and then and then the epoxy primer after that. So there's still more rounds of uh, a little bit more rounds of fill to go with regard to, you know, the priming. But um, yeah, this is it. And then I started working on the door, glazing the door. There was a lot of issues with the filler I did here in the seam where I welded. The bottom's not great. Uh, so, oh, sorry, my shadow's in the way. But yeah, I still gotta work on that. So one more round of glazing, I'll probably call that done. And then I'll spot do uh, prime that. On the inside, everything's getting sanded down. And so tomorrow, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be ready. So all that stuff sanded, the jams, and um, yeah, just I need, need to do a little more sanding on the driver's side here, down here, but then this is ready to spot prime as well, and we'll be done with this. Well, like I showed in the beginning of the video, this is the final reveal of the cabin area. As you can see, you know, it has the, the, the primers all back on here. The driver's door, I did a lot of reworking on, uh, you know, with the glazing and, and, the, and the filling. Obviously, all the work I did on the, the front um, nose there. And then on the sides here, I, you know, where we patched in that upper dog leg, that's all perfectly blended now. And uh, all the spot priming around some of those parts that are going to get primed, as well as on both sides of the captain's chair, that's all cleaned and primed. All the upper sill stuff, like I mentioned before, and uh, all the jams and everything else. On the other side, uh, I did that lower dog leg on the driver's side. That's looking really good and filled. And, all, you know, again, all the jams on this side are all primed and done. And the roof up to, right up to where it ends above the captain's area is all smooth and primed and treated and... Uh, it's just looking really good, so I'm pretty happy with all that. And of course, the uh, yeah, the driver, the back of the driver's chair is all primed up, and the inside of the roof is all smooth, de-rusted, and primed. Well, just to provide some bonus shots of the front area, you can kind of see the the difference between the way it used to look and all of the fixes I made. So. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video.